I've never filmed anything. I've never acted on camera. I've never. So I'm Googling, how do you shoot? How do you edit? Oh my God. I'm watching other people's stuff. I shot a whole video. That, that first video, I shot the whole thing one time. I got it back. It was all blurry. Well, camera wasn't God. even in focus because the guy that shot it for me, it was his first time doing a video. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Wild Truth, the show that brings you the wild of wild out there. And today, it's not only wild, this person takes everything to insanity. Please welcome my guest, Adam W., ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Thank you, guys. Welcome, buddy. Thank you. Really welcome. Thank you. You know, uh, I've had a um, short amount of time, but uh, really quality time with you. Quality over quantity quality over quantity. And we've spent some really valuable uh, time together, good conversation. I got to know you as a person and we kept talking about a bunch of comedy stuff. And I said, Adam, we got to talk about this on the podcast. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Well, good. Good. Wait, you said something. We've, we got to talk about something on the podcast. <laughs> everything, everything that we talk yeah. about outside should yeah. be in, on the podcast because yeah. you're such a authentic, emotionally driven, such a, such a, um, real being that I think. Was that I, my phone? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're fucking unprofessional. <laughs> TikToker, Sorry, We're asshole, <laughs> leaving his phone on. Look at right as soon as we start, he's getting text messages. <laughs> oh, look at your uh, phone. I you gotta got take two this. 20 right. billion views. I gotta be, I'll be right back. I gotta take this. No, I'm just uh, <laughs> it's okay, buddy. Buddy, you take every skit to the next level. Everything elevates, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Even right now, your phone rings. You have to make a fucking big, you know, <laughs> uh, a, a scene out of it and, and apologize. And where the what, fuck do I courtesy, put my phone? That's courtesy, man. I'm, I'm, I'm being, I'm being human. I'm letting you guys know I have a phone too. Everyone has a phone in here. Can yes. we relate to that? Yes, exactly. And my phone so happened to be on, and I just wanted to address that that yes. it's off now. So, look at this. <laughs> this guy's phone goes. Off. You think my, I got a text? Think, I got a text. A one. Ding. You think you got a whole phone call? And what kind of ringtone is that? That's gonna be able to like fuck up the show. I'll, I'll double down everything hey, you this do. This guy, everything Hold he on. does, he has to outdo me. Hello, thank you. Yes. <laughs> no, uh, I. Oh, I see. You called because you want Adam to apologize to you as well. Uh, it's just my manager. <laughs> he realized your phone rang. He called to say, "Can oh, he Adam?" To, so you, so can, you can apologize to him for your phone going off in the middle of my show. Okay, well, I do you want me to, should I call him and tell him I'm sorry, or you want me to tell him on the phone here? Oh, fuck. It's just my manager saying, uh, this podcast is so horrible, we're dropping you. It did. It, <laughs> we just started. He's not even giving you oh, a well. chance. <laughs> so, buddy. We're still on the intro. Let, let's right, start, are we still on the intro? Yeah, we're, I, think, I think we're in there. By the way, you guys are awesome, because they gave me, I have a cup of water and a cup of juice. Oh, so is that right? I, I just, just got, wanted to... I just got a cup of fucking yeah. straight up nothing. Um, That's a prop. Yeah. There's nothing in there. Nothing you can put it there. down, man. Sorry. Right. <laughs> I have enough cups for us. So, Adam, um, I guess I guess I like to start with understanding your style of comedy because obviously millions of people have shown interest and, and you've realized, okay, this is what the audience loves. And you keep making it more interesting. You make it better. Every skit just elevates to a whole another level of insanity. It gets bigger and crazier. And people love it, including myself. And I want to kind of like have you talk to us and tell us like, how did that happen? Like, did you, when, when, while you're making all of this content, you realize, ah, that's my, that's my thing. And, and I'm going to do it bigger and better than anyone else. Yeah, I think uh, like when I first started, I was trying like all different types of stuff. You know, I knew I knew I wanted to, do, I wanted to do comedy, but I didn't. You know, there's so many ways you could do comedy, and I was trying all these different things. And um, I was like, what's my style? Like, what's my thing? And I was like so caught up in trying to guess or trying to create something, rather than um, I saw success when I just started putting stuff out and kind of let my audience decide what they like, right? And even if it was like, you know, I'm getting typically five comments and I get 10 comments on this one style of video. I just know that there's more people engaging in this. Um, and it was kind of this thing where I was just creating and I was just making stuff. Mm -hmm. And I let my audience really dictate what they thought was was funny and what they liked. And when I see like success in something, I'll double down on it, 
right? And I'll just keep going until that thing is not a thing anymore. And then I'll switch it. So um, doing like the big props, um, which was not every single one of the videos I did or getting super extreme. Every time I did those videos, people really loved them. So I was like, well, let me do more of those. And mm. then it kind of just became my thing. And I, you know, took yeah, it to the- you, ha you have a very specific sort of uh, comedy and your sketches, you know, you have, a, you have your own voice, obviously. And you work really hard. And I think uh, everybody knows you work hard, but I don't think they know the depth of how much it takes to do this amount of content, to, to work with uh, creative people, editors, you know, sound guys, film, you know, uh, camera people that are coming to shoot, et cetera. Tell us a little bit about your lifestyle because it, you gotta be a very disciplined creator to be able to be this consistent and deliver every time. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't do anything else besides shoot videos and stand up. Um, that, but besides that, uh, just work, work, work. Um, and I have fun doing it. You know, this is fun to me. Like people are always like, "What do you do for fun?" Well, this is fun. You know, making mm -hmm. content, mm -hmm. creating stuff, making people laugh is fun for me. Um, and that's all I do from morning to night. And then same thing, rinse and repeat every single day. Okay, were you just as hard worker before you become a content creator? Oh, yeah. I was yeah. always a hard worker. Okay. But to me, like, I never pride myself on being a hard worker. I work like a dog. I work all day. Um, but I don't pride myself on being a hard worker. It's just a thing that is like a given to me. Everyone should work hard. Um, I think to me, the stuff that impresses me is where my brain can go and how I can write something and actually create it. And um, taking a thought to putting that thought on paper to then putting that piece of paper on a shoot, shooting it, then taking the the footage, editing it, then editing it, then putting it on the world. I love that process, mm. right? And that to me is like, Wow, I could do that. I can come up with something that was just a stupid thought. Yeah, if, put you, it if out. you didn't love it, it, it would have never, you know, become a reality. I mean, yeah. that's that's just the main ingredients for any artist. They have to be madly in love yeah. with with what they're doing in order to be successful. What was the day job before the the content creation? So I was working as an assistant. That's how I moved out here. I was working as an assistant, and uh, I moved out here to be an actor. That was my goal. Right. And uh, I had to make money while mm -hmm. I was here. And I was living with my cousin in Long Beach. Uh, he was like in a studio apartment. And uh, I was commuting here every day wow. doing this job as an assistant. And I hated it. I hated it. Um, scheduling stuff, picking up, dropping off. Just Who were you an assistant to? Uh, actually, a good friend of mine. Um, uh, he was actually the reason when I, when I wanted to move here to be an actor. I hit him up and I was like, hey, you know, I really want to move to L.A. Is there any way you can like help me? get a job. I need to make money so I can move out here. And he's like, yeah, I'll hire you as assistant. I'm still good friends with him to this oh, day. Were you a good assistant? Oh, I was good. Really? Uh, the thing about me is whatever I do, I'm going to, I'm going to give maximum effort. So wow. I just made sure, you know, e even today now, like I'm not the best at, I have an assistant now, <laughs> you know, but like for scheduling and like just making sure everything was perfect. I, I'm a perfectionist. So I did a pretty good job. Okay. Okay. So at what point you go, you went to your friend, you're like, Hey man, thanks for the opportunity. I'm going to quit. I've so, got a new career. I had a video, and uh, at this time I was like, the acting stuff wasn't really working out. And th I moved out here to be an actor. I never acted before. I, I'm like, I'm going around, I want to be an actor. I never acted before. <laughs> never, ever, in anything. I just said I want to be an actor. And at the time, acting classes are expensive. Like 400 bucks for acting class, right? I didn't have it. So I wasn't even going to acting class, right? But I'm just going around the city telling people I want to be an actor. I'm an actor. And... Um, that just wasn't working for me. So, and I didn't book anything. I didn't get a manager, agent, nothing. And then I saw people making stuff online, like on, on Instagram specifically. And this is right when Vine ended. A lot of people always think I was on Vine. I actually was never on Vine. People always come up to me like, I love your Vines. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. But I was never on Vine. Uh, I started on Instagram, <laughs> but I was shooting with all the Viners. Okay. So that's why people think uh, I was- They assume on, on, you yeah. were part of the crew. Okay. So I'm making a couple videos, just nothing. Just 60 views, 70 views. The first video I- wanted to make that I had a plan of making a video it took me like four months to make one 30 second video and it four months to take a 30 you are yeah. you are ridiculous no 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 not because I was like no 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 not because oh, okay. not, not like, that's regular. OCD next no, no, level no no no, no. <laughs> it's because I didn't know what the hell I was doing I had no clue I've never filmed anything. I've never acted on camera. I've never, I'm, I, I, I never wrote an idea out. I, I was a funny, I was a funny guy, but I like, I never actually did it. 
So I'm Googling, how do you shoot? How do you edit? Oh my God. I'm watching other people's stuff. I shot a whole video, that, that first video, I shot the whole thing one time. I got it back, it was all blurry. Well, my camera wasn't God. even in focus because the guy that shot it for me, it was his first time doing a video. It was the first day with the camera. It was you, his first day with the camera. You were hiring on Craigslist, yeah. like just some No, random... I didn't even hire him. I didn't have the money to hire him. He was like, hey, I have a camera. I just well, bought this camera. I want to be a videographer. I was like, oh, I want to be an actor. <laughs> so he shot the whole video out of focus. Oh, my he, All God. you had to do was put, press automatic focus. So that happened. Then, um, you know, try I, to get... I hope you still have that footage. No, so no. So we can, we, can, we can post your first time ever oh, blurry, out-of-focus content. I don't know where that video is at. It's probably deleted somewhere. But he, uh, th then, then just getting someone in the video. Imagine, like, going up to somebody, like, hey, I'm going to make this video. I have 300 followers. I'm going to put you in the video. They're like, no, <laughs> I have stuff that people have jobs. You know, I'm trying to convince people to be in a video. Just to do that was hard, right? Then even if I got somebody, I'd have to make sure that I wasn't working that day. They weren't working that day. They showed up on time. I got the video done. The videographer had to be there. Like, so many moving parts. Yeah. And four months, you know, of just trial and error, I finally get the video done. And I had around 300 followers at the time. And I put out the video and it got 90 views. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Because that now at this point, I've been here like a year and a half. Nothing has gone my way. Hmm. I, I'm working this job that now I hate. And it just, this goal that I had seems to be impossible. And my last straw was, hey, you know, maybe I could make a video and put it out online. And maybe a director will see it and it'll put me in a movie and that'll be my big break. And when that video got 90 views, that was it. I was like, I said, I'm moving home. I'm, I'm done. Um, and I had decided that in the beginning of the month, I had to wait to the end of the month to get paid so I can book my flight back. I'm from New York, right? I'm going to move back in with my mom. I'm, you know, 24 or 25 at this time. And this happens in the beginning of the month. And I say, okay, let me wait till I get my paycheck. And I'm going to book my flight. That's it. I'm going to move back with my mom, get a real job, I guess, do something, right? And... While I was here, I was like, yeah, you know what? I might as well film a couple more videos. I have a whole month here, right? <laughs> so I put out another one, 60 views. Put out another one, 70 views. And then this fourth one that I put out, put it out in the morning. And then at nighttime, it had 1,000 views. And I was like, oh, it's pretty cool. Like, I didn't think I was anything crazy, but, you know, like, I have 300 followers. I got 1,000 views. That's pretty cool, but whatever. I go to bed. I wake up the next morning, it has 400,000 views. Wow. And I'm like, what the fuck happened last night? Wow. <laughs> this is crazy. And a bunch of people repost my videos, and one person, notably Ludacris, shared my video. How wow. did he even see it? I still don't know to this day. Um, <laughs> I had 300 followers. And this video goes to like 400,000 views. My page goes from 300 to 7,000 followers, right? So I have so much confidence at this point. Like, this is the best thing that's happened to me in a year and a half, just in life in general, not like personal life. I was really down on myself during this time, right? Uh -huh. And this is the best news. This is the greatest thing that's happened to me, right? I have 400,000 views on video. I have 7,000 followers. So I call my boss and I'm like, hey, and, and I had, didn't inform him that I was going to, uh, that I was going to quit, you know, at the end of that month. I probably should have, but yeah, I don't know anything. I was, Dude. you know, whatever. So hit him up. I'm like, Hey, you see my video? And he's like, yeah, it's crazy. You know, it went viral. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to quit and do this full time. And he's like, are you sure you like, just cause you have a viral video, you're going to quit. And I'm like, I'm famous. <laughs> this is what I do. I get 400,000 views. I'm the guy. So I quit. And then the next video I posted only got 400 views. And I'm like, Oh my What's God. Going on? Oh my God. What happened to all the people that watched the video? <laughs> Where are yeah, they at? Yeah. You know? Um, and the next video I post thousand views. So, Instantly, I had that taste of, you know, mm. this got so many views, but then now the rest of the stuff's not getting anything, right? But I knew that if just because- you hit it right, it's going it, to happen. It, it, I'll do this 600 more times to mm. get that result one more time. Mm. I knew mm. that I did something right. I did That's something so right wonderful. that got success. And I'll do this process 5 million more times to get that same result one more time. Because I know that now I have the confidence that I've done it. Mm. It's possible. Now we just got to figure out how to put the puzzle together, right? This is amazing. So so that that inspired you, and I love your attitude when you said to yourself, look, I don't care what it takes. I'll do it as many more times. I know 
if it's hit once, I'm going to hit it again. So, so you put all the persistent and hard work and then look, we're here today. Yeah. yeah. I just want to know, uh, in that window of hitting that first video 400,000 until the next one and the next one and, and things pick up, you quit your job. How did you make a living? Because really yeah. we all know these videos not necessarily pay you any money for you to be able to pay your rent and, and get your food, et cetera. Yeah. So at that time I was living in Long Beach with my cousin in the studio apartment. It was horrible. My bed was next to his bed. <laughs> it wasn't even, I was on a couch and his bed was here. and um. I had met some people. I was here for like a year and a half. I had met some people. And uh, I ended up moving to North Hollywood. And it was a two-bedroom with six people. <laughs> like curtain in my room, everything, wow. right? And I was paying around like, don't quote me, something like 500 or 600 bucks a month. Even with six people, that's still that much. Wow. Um, and my sister was paying my rent every month. Because she saw the video and I was like, hey, like I'm telling you, I got something here. I'm going to make money off this. I don't know how, but mm -hmm. if you just pay my rent, I'll pay you back. Because she had a little bit of money at the time. And um, she's like, oh, I'll pay your rent. And she paid my rent, and I just made videos every single day. Every day, woke up, shot a video. Whether I posted it or not, every day, made a video. And uh, in about, I think it's six months, I got to half a million followers. And I'm walking around, and everyone's like, oh, my God, it's the guy from Instagram. Oh, my God, I watch your videos on Instagram. And everyone just assuming... This guy probably is rich, but I'm in, still in a two bedroom with six people and half a million followers. I don't know how to make any money though. How do you make money off and of And your it? sister is paying your rent every yeah, month. Yeah, every what month. What a phenomenal sister. Yeah, okay. every okay. month paying my rent. And now as, as the months go by, she's like, oh my God, my friends start to know, my friends know you now. Like they, they someone showed me a video and I, I was like, that's my brother. I had to convince them that I was related to you. And, uh, you know, that kind of fueled her even more to be like, oh, like something's going to happen. Everybody was like, something's going to happen. How's this guy going to make money? Right. But I was making no money at all. Yeah. And um, I went in uh, a few other of the big creators at the time reached out, like DM me and they're like, hey, you should come uh, to a shoot day and shoot with us. And these are all like people that I've watched and studied. Right. And when I got there, I was like, what's your name again? You know, I know them all. <laughs> I've studied everything about them. Um, and. I'm 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 pretty shy guy. I was, you know, at the time. I didn't want to like step on anyone's toes. I didn't want to uh, offend anybody. I was just grateful and happy to be there, right? Like there's people in here with millions of followers. I'm just a student of the game. I want to be like them. But I'm in the back of my head. I'm like, how the fuck is everyone making money? <laughs> because I'm broke. How yeah. are all these people making yeah. money? Like I don't want to ask anybody. I would never dare to ask somebody about their business or how do you make money. It's a rude question. I don't even want to ask that to somebody. So I'm just kind of observing and I hear some people talking and they're like, we're doing, uh, I have a brand deal for this and this company is paying me to do this. So in my head, I'm like, oh, how, the, how the hell do I get a brand deal? You know, that's what I, that's what I need to get. I need to get a brand deal. And uh, I had this, this series I was doing at the time and every time I posted this series, it get a million views. It was my best series. Every time I posted this video, it get a million views. And I had this idea where I was like, okay, I'm getting a million views, but why are no brands reaching out to me? Maybe if I have a video that goes so viral, that gets so big, a company will see it and they'll reach out and they'll pay me. And that's just what I came up with in my head. So I had this idea where I wanted to get the, a giraffe in my video, a real giraffe, right? And I <laughs> told myself, I got a giraffe in this video. This I'm gonna shit's get gonna the go biggest. viral. Because the thing is, like, <laughs> look, everybody okay. has done any and everything on social media now. But eight years ago, seven years ago, nobody put a giraffe in a comedy sketch. A real giraffe, right? So I go back to Google and I type in giraffe. And on the 10th page of Google, I find a guy who claims he has a giraffe. So I give him a call and I'm like, hey, I'm embarrassed to even tell him it's for Instagram. He probably doesn't even know what Instagram, he didn't even know what Instagram was. So I'm like, hey, I'm a student and I'm doing this student project and need a giraffe. Is there any way I can use your giraffe for this video? I'm filming on a cell phone. And he's like, you know, I charge $10,000 minimum. I do movies. This guy does movies. He puts animals in movies, right? And I'm like, I don't have $10,000. What's, what's the cheapest you can give it to me for? And he's like, if you come to me, I'll give it to you for $3,500. I'm like, well, where are you? And he's like, I'm in Medford, Oregon, right? Oh, whoa. Yeah, Medford, Oregon, right? And um, so I call my sister and I'm like, hey, is there any way you can give me $3,500 for a giraffe? And she's like, absolutely not. No chance. I'm not giving you, I'm already paying your rent. Why would I give you $3,500? You have no money. I'm not giving you $3,500 for a giraffe. So 
I beg her, she keeps saying no, my birthday comes up. And I'm like, hey, my birthday, if you're giving me the money for my birthday, I promise you I'll pay you back. And she's like, okay, you fucking idiot here. $3,500, you better pay me my money back. And she's serious. She's really mad. She's like, you better like, find a way to give me my money back. So I get the money. I take, I book a flight to Medford, Oregon. The same day I get there is the same day I'm leaving. I'm not paying for a hotel over and I don't have the money to stay. Like I'm going in. Oh my God. Everything has to be perfect because I'm going wow. in there and I'm filming. I think I got in at like 3 p.m. My flight's at 6 p.m. leaving, right? This guy's picking me up from the airport, right? One, I'm nervous because this is like a country town, right? In the middle of nowhere, right? I sound like a white guy on the phone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? I'm like, what is this guy going to, yeah. like, what if this guy, he's going to see I'm brown? What if he's oh racist? I God. don't know. Right? I have no clue. And does this guy even have a giraffe? Is he going to murder me? You, you become know? the meal of the <laughs> giraffe the next day. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I don't even, I haven't even verified if this guy has a giraffe. He just, I just, call, I cold called somebody, <laughs> right? And I have 3,500 cash in my pocket. Oh my so God. he picks me up from the airport. This guy pulls up. He's got like this pickup truck, American flag on the back. And I'm like, oh God, <laughs> he's going to see I'm Middle Eastern. I'm a brown guy. Uh, like, you know, I hope this goes well. I get in the car. Nicest guy in the world. Takes me to his ranch. He has a giraffe. So I was excited about that. I wow. wasn't going to get murdered. And wow. it, it, it was real. And I have him film the video. What I did is I just turned the corner with the giraffe, right? And I cheated the shot. So I just needed a shot of me turning the corner of the giraffe. And then I filmed the rest in LA. Okay. Right? But I already filmed my parts in LA. This was okay. the last shot that I did. Okay. So he films it. I get the video. I edit it. I go right back to the airport. I go home. I edit it. I post it. Seven million views. Right? Seven million views on this video. Everyone's talking about it. This is, you know, people are hitting me up. Oh my God, sorry, video, sorry, video. And, uh, but no money, nothing, right? And I'm really happy, but I'm also like, shit, it didn't work. And no, no brand reached out. And a few days goes by and one of my buddies, he's monetizing on Facebook. And this is like in the beta program. So like these beta programs, they have a small group of creators. They're testing it out. And the people that are in the program are making crazy money. Because wow. it's a very small pool of people mm. and they're just testing ads. And this guy that I'm good friends with, at, I wasn't even good friends with him at the time. Now I am. I kind of knew him in passing. He was part of the program and he hits me up. He's like, hey, I saw your video. And um, let me post it on my Facebook and whatever it makes, I'll give you half. I'm like, yeah, of course. Like, easy. So he posts a video. On his Facebook. On his Facebook. You didn't have a Facebook to try I had yourself? one, but I didn't have, I wasn't part of the beta program. Okay. I wasn't okay. able to he monetize. He was a part of the program. Yeah, he, he was okay. a small group of gotcha. people that was in that select okay. program that could make money. Very now, cool. Now, you know, you can monetize on Facebook. Anybody could do it. But this is, we're talking seven years ago. Right? Very cool. So he posts it. It gets 50 million views. That equates to $38,000. He sends me a PayPal for 18000 Most money I've ever made in my life. I never, I, wow. I didn't even have maybe 200 bucks in my bank account after I bought that flight. Wow. So now I have 18,000. So I call my sister. 18,000? Yeah. Yeah. He wow. gave me a PayPal for 18,000. And it was 38,000 that he made off the video. So he did give me half of what it made. So How many millions of views it got 50, to pay you 38,000? 58, 50 million 50 views. 50 million paid 38,000 he gave you half. Wow. Yeah. And I mean... Those numbers change, monetization changes, but just in the program that he was in, the testing that they were doing, that's what it equated to, right? I wasn't going to ask any questions. So yeah, 18,000. It's the most, most money I've ever made ever, right? So I called my sister back and I'm like, hey, here's 4,000 bucks, the extra 500, <laughs> you know, because I have 18,000 now, right? And a couple days goes by and I get a DM from T-Mobile, who I still work with to this day. And uh, they're like, hey, uh, we love your videos. We would love for you to do this campaign for us. And I'm like, yeah, how much? <laughs> you know? And they're, they say, well, if you create a piece of content for us, you know, et cetera, with this guidelines and for this campaign, um, we can have a budget of 20000 for you. And I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I end up doing that deal. The next week, I do Old Spice. I then do Mountain Dew, Doritos, you name it. I probably did maybe 30 brands. All the brands are coming to you. You don't have an agent. You don't oh, have a Oh, no, so I got a manager at that deal. time. I, okay. I, I got a man. I, I had uh, that for that T-Mobile deal. I had my manager that I just met negotiate that deal. Cool. Um, 
And That's then I great. Later so you had a professional to, that knows yeah, the deal. And okay, then I great. later signed to CAA, which I'm still with to this day. And I'm still with my manager to this day. Um, and it was kind of this thing where like, when it rains, it pours. You know, I went from zero money in whatever month that was to three months later, four months later, I had over $300,000 in my bank account. That's incredible. Right? Um, by the end of that year, I had a million. And I thought I was rich, and then I had to pay taxes. But I knew <laughs> that, hey, what the, what the hell is going on? This is working. You know, I put this out there. Yeah. And yeah. this is a crazy wow. thing to do. This what is a, a crazy thing to do, and it just took story. off. story. What yeah. an incredible story. And I've been doing it uh, ever since, and it's only got bigger and better. Buddy, there's so much lessons in this in this story that you said for anybody that they don't people that are listening to this they don't have to be a content creator to be taking a bunch of nuggets from this personally i took the idea of i should start a giraffe business you know <laughs> yeah. i mean fuck, i know a guy ten thousand dollars to just come make a video with my giraffe no problem i know a guy uh, <laughs> but buddy really this is this is such a beautiful story and now that you brought up a few points the fact that you're brown, uh, you got to tell us what kind of brown. Yeah, so everybody can can understand because, you know, it's important. My brown side, they want to know. The other browns want to know. Specify. Yeah, uh, I'm Egyptian and Afghan. And um, my my sister actually took a 23andMe. Uh, is that what it's called? Yep. The, yep. the thing? 23andMe. A, a bunch of other Middle Eastern things too, but mainly. Right, so you you are like ha ha yeah, to the huh. team. You're like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're, you're, okay, fantastic. It's like a Middle Eastern uh, all over, you know. Now, now you're talking about a Middle Eastern young man who comes out to Los Angeles to become, uh, you know, uh, an entertainer, like whether it's an actor or a content creator. Yeah, how did your family react to this? I mean, I just love to first of all as much as you're willing to share, learn about your family, you know, and, 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 you know, obviously who they were and how did they react to this, to their son's decision? Yeah. So my parents are immigrants, right? So they, uh, when I said I want to be a comedian and I wanted to be an actor, like, what the fuck? Are you? <laughs> what? No, this is a horrible idea. Well, why don't you become a doctor or a lawyer? Right. Um, and I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to work a nine to five. I don't want to work a, mm. I, I don't want to do that. I just don't want to do it. It's not my thing. It's not what I'm happy doing. And, um, when I was, when I was doing it, you know, I don't want to say they weren't supportive because they were, but you know, it was kind of this thing of like, ah, oh, well, you know, if it doesn't work out, you can always go do this or, you know, Hey, you know, try it, but you know, you should be doing this. Right. And the year and a half that I was doing it, a lot of people lost their faith in this being a reality for me or, you know, and, and even like to this day now, like whether someone believes in me, it doesn't matter to me. And if you don't believe in me, it doesn't matter to me. If you think I'm funny, it doesn't matter to me. And if you don't think I'm funny, it doesn't matter to me. I believe what I believe because. Yeah, yeah but that's easy to say now. Not you're fucking successful. You got billions <laughs> no, of fucking but, views. But, but, but Somebody this is always doesn't what think I... you're funny like. Fuck off! I got a fucking billion fans. Yeah, or, but this is this is me. this is the no. mentality you have to have yes, in order yes. to get no, that. Of course, right? of course, and of and course. and a lot of people are just like, "What the hell are you doing with your yeah. life?" And you know, no one. That's the thing. No one believes in you until you're successful. Yeah. Nobody yeah. believes that. When you become when oh you get this many followers, you get this many views. I knew you were funny. You were always funny. I knew you could do it. Yeah. But when you're not getting any of that, it's like, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Yeah, hey, you're funny, but you should probably get a you know, join the real world, get a job, right? Yeah. So everyone becomes a believer when you make any type of success. But they were, you know... They were like, still cool about it. Yeah, they were still cool about it. And they're just like, you know, what the, what the hell is this? They were hoping and, you go, you don't succeed, you go back and you become a lawyer. Yeah. yeah but exactly. your sister also, is she older or younger? Than older. You? Older. What a cool, how many siblings? Three sisters. Three sisters older. You're the youngest yeah. kid. No, oh, that's why you think you're special. <laughs> you have three <laughs> older sisters who always say yeah. how beautiful, how good looking you are and it gets into your head and you're like, I'm going to be an actor. And then uh, <laughs> I'm the most good looking brown guy that's the tallest in the all brown people of all times <laughs> and you move out to LA and look you were right yeah. Yeah, I was right <laughs> you yeah, were right. right no there was a long time I had zero confidence you know I think I think I had that mentality when I moved here and then I got here and I saw how hard it was yeah, yeah. and I was like this is not gonna happen even when that video took off it was already this I was already at a rock bottom state of like this is not gonna happen I'm just trying shit 
whatever. It's not going to happen. I'm going to move back home. I already started planning everything else. But even like my parents, um, I remember when I had like, you know, my, my mom, now she's on Instagram. Well, back then, she didn't even know what the hell Instagram was, right? Now she's commenting on stuff. I have to tell her to stop commenting. She's fighting with people in the in the comments. My son, someone says, I'm not funny. They're like, my son is funny. Don't say that. Don't even let them know you're my mom. If they find out you're my mom, it's over for both of us, right? Yeah. So she's in it now. She's number. She's the number one fan. But uh, back then, she didn't even have it. Even when I had like around half a million followers, she didn't even have Instagram, right? And I was like, hey, you know... Um, I started getting all this traction. I was getting these followers. I was like, I'm, I'm pretty famous. And she's like, ah, whatever. Like, you're not even getting money. Like, get a job. Like, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and I remember I went to New York, and uh, we were like getting out of the car, and there was like these three school buses of kids that pulled up randomly, and they were getting out, and like three of the kids saw me, and then the rest of them saw me, and they swarmed us, like over 200 kids, me and my mom in the middle, the kids going crazy, like taking out their wow. phones. I can't believe it's Adam W. Like, screaming, freaking out. And I've, I meet fans all the time and I know, you know, that I have a fan. A, That's a fan, so you know? beautiful, But she didn't man. see it before. With this was her mom. first time seeing That's it. That's amazing. And uh, we get like, there was actually like a cop over there, like in the area and they like escorted us out. It, got, it was like a, almost like a mob. And I took as many pictures and we, they cop, cop kind of escorted us back to like the car and we got in the car and she's like, wow, I guess you're her famous <laughs> and i was like i tried telling you and then she downloaded instagram and then now she's you know she is who she is now so that is so wonderful so who's funny mom or dad everyone claims that they're the reason why i'm funny to be honest you didn't get it from them no what they, i think they're, they're funny they're funny but there there's a difference between uh being funny, funny, bone, funny and, bone. and producing know, that, that, funny yeah of you know course, what of they course. do is funny but they're not doing it on purpose. So, but, but the thing about you is you get comedy. If you yeah. didn't get comedy, and that's sort of a gift, like uh, so many people are funny, and you're right, producing, creating comedy, is it, it comes from that you know, understanding what is funny and then bringing it to life, right? But, but you know, when you look at your family, you know, where do you think you got the funny bone? It's a good question. It's it's tough for me to say. I yeah, don't... because because you're brown. Because every <laughs> <laughs> nobody no, has a nobody, sense of humor. No, no, all... None of these in the house. They're like, <laughs> where are you? Where are you going? <laughs> Who is this? Who are you hanging out with? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like an interrogation at all times. But the thing is, everyone, you know, Middle Eastern family, everyone thinks they're funny. They all think they're funny. Now they all want to take credit for it. <laughs> it was me that told you this. I I say this joke. They all think they're funny. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, all, I was the reason. But all the credit goes to your older sister who supported you through yeah. it. Yeah. She gets a lot of credit there. And and that's really freaking cool. I think there's a voice inside you that that knows, that knows the truth. You have a journey. I mean, this is my belief is you come to this world and there's a life journey. And the more you are in tune with your gut feeling and you can hear that voice that really is telling you that, hey, this is my destiny. This is this is what I'm made for. I know I can do this. And if that's, that voice is really strong and clear to you and you actually, you, you know, really commit, then, then I believe that this is the result. I mean, you, you're going to, you're going to break through not getting out of this, you know, just, just continuing this family talk. What's your relationship with your dad? Like what's your relationship with your mom? Like, and, and how has that relationship change or not change since you know you were a young man came into this industry and now you're you're a very successful content creator yeah i mean i'm really close with my family in general you know mom dad my sisters are all in a group chat mm. talk every day try to talk to my mom on the phone every day so really close you know really close i think it's so important um you know i think i have like tons of colleagues and people that i work with that are friends but for me you know a place that I can always be myself and not really have to try. Um, you know, even like when I go places, sometimes I feel the pressure of like, I got to be funny. I got to make people laugh. Uh, with my family, you know, I could just say nothing. And just, you know, really? not have to, uh, you know, put, put it on, you know? Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I don't have to put it on in front of them. Uh, how many times a day in the WhatsApp group, lot. they ask you, uh, Adam, when are you getting married? Oh, every day. That's what that text was earlier. <laughs> it was my mom saying, when are you going to get married? But I am uh, I'm looking for a wife. Yeah? Yeah. You want to have kids? Yeah. 
sooner I'm, than I'm, later. I'm a big kids guy. I think I, I want at least like four or five kids. Watch out, ladies. He's going to yeah. get you pregnant. Yeah, I will Watch if you out. get close enough. <laughs> Listen, you're such a good guy that I wish for you to find someone that is just as good as you. And when I Thank say you. that, I mean like spirit wise and just intention, you know, pure intention, good hearted woman comes into your life and you guys create an incredible family and uh there goes your content your content goes to shit now you're making <laughs> just baby videos and, and more, no those first know. of all those baby videos they, they do, do numbers oh so that's why you want to get married <laughs> you have a kid just you want to you yeah, want to double the views these kids this guy yeah he these needs kids more are gonna, views <laughs> yeah these kids the second they're born they're pumping tiktoks they're pumping tiktoks <laughs> all day i'm opening up it's gonna be like uh, one, you know those influencer houses yeah that's gonna be the house with my family <laughs> everybody's gotta put out content that, that's amazing oh my god that's okay what, you know good stuff good stuff um buddy who's your comedy inspiration Comedians that you look up to, in general, or like I have like a, a stand-up guy, I have movie guys. In, in... Yeah, like who is the comedian that 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 really inspires you? You know, that you love. Well, one I love Judd Apatow, like the films that he puts out. I think you know he's made some of the best comedy films that we've seen. Um, Kevin Hart is another guy who's just hilarious. Um, his you know mind how he thinks how he puts comedy out unmatched um acting wise i love uh adam sandler i love ben stiller um like all these guys i kind of watch a little bit of everybody to be honest there's a guy maximini that i watch I, I swear to god he told me that's why i brought him on the podcast <laughs> and now he's a star from judd apatow and then it goes to kevin hart the fuck I, I'm the only other brown comedian that, that he said, I love you, Max. And I was like, we need to do the podcast. This is the whole reason we no, fucking yeah, sat down no, and you're going to sell know, me out in front of everyone. No, no, the thing is, I was saying all these other names just to get to my story about you. My, <laughs> like, when I watched you, I'm not even bullshitting here. Uh, I remember when I watched you at Laugh Factory, I was telling him, the way you position, like, how you do comedy, you know, even, like, this guy, okay, if you guys don't know, like, he's in the club and... He's going up there and he'll talk to somebody all the way to the left and he'll pick on them. He'll roast them a bit. It's funny, funny stuff happens. And then he moves on and he finds somebody in the middle and then he starts messing around with this person. Right. And then he finds a way to relate this person and this person together. Right. And now he's got this joke going, bouncing between all three of them. Right. Then he'll find somebody on the right side of the room and they'll start picking at them and hearing their story, where they're from, what do they do for work? And then I'll connect all three of them. And it's like this genius of like, you're getting everybody in the club to just cipher all the laughter to the middle and everybody's laughing and you're doing this bit and you're kind of working the room, truly working the room. Right. And I'm like, is this guy doing this on fucking purpose or like, cause this is what I'm seeing. Cause like the first time I watched it, I just watched it and I enjoyed it and I laughed. Right. And the second time I'm enjoying laughing, but I'm like, how the hell is this guy doing this what is his strategy here and I it's so you. good that you're able to uh just work an entire room and what it does is it brings the audience together and it, and it brings such a magic to the performance because it's like whether you weren't involved in the beginning or you weren't laughing as much as, by the end of the show everybody is so wired up and everyone is so like brought together it's almost like when you leave we're like fuck we don't want you to leave you know, um, and I think that's that's the magic about you. Thank you, buddy. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I didn't say that about Kevin he, he Hart. Gave me I didn't all say that, that about love. anyone else. You're very sweet. You're very observant. That's what's very special about you. And and uh, since you gave me all that love, I have to say that uh, when I watched you, you told me, Max, this is the ninth time I'm going on stage. I was like, what? And you're like, yeah, this is the ninth time. And you went on stage and you delivered such a strong set that I swear the whole time I sat there, I was like, wow, this is a star in making. Like your stand-up is already great, but you're going, you're going to great places. I Thank mean, you. really, really, you're going to take, and, and look, this is your personality. And the more I'm getting to know you and everybody that is listening to this podcast could definitely say, hey, this creator is so persistent and is so committed to his art that he's not stopping till he hit greatness. And <clears throat> I already know, I mean, we had great conversations and we went on a hike together and, and you said to me, I said, buddy, where are you taking your stand up? And you said, I'm going to be the best stand up comedian ever. And that's so wonderful 
to say out loud. A lot of people might say, oh, I don't want to say something like that out loud because I'm going to come across conceited or I've got a big head or something. But it's so important to say that out loud and say it to your friends and family and people around you because you set up the bar as high as you can. And that's how you truly are going to go you know, really, really great places because you're not putting, you know, some sort of uh, a, a low goal for yourself. You're going, I'm going to be the greatest. And regardless, you're going to hit some incredible places with your comedy. And that's really exciting. This is, uh, so Comedy Inspiration, Maximini, and then <laughs> all the other people. Yeah, I'm not, I'm serious. You uh, are an inspiration Pissed to me, up. you know? No, because even like, you know, I, I'm new to stand up and I'm getting into this world of stand up. And, um, it's one thing to appreciate somebody, um, you know, if you're not doing that craft, right? Like, I'm not doing, I wasn't doing stand-up. And I can say, oh, this guy's funny, right? But then when you start to do the same craft that person does, and mm. then you see them do it, your level of appreciation goes so much higher for that person. Because they're making the hard look easy. You make the hard look easy, right? To go up there and just, you don't know what you're going to get. But taking whatever you get and make it amazing. Or even when you do your material, being able to relate to people mm -hmm. and someone be like, holy shit, that's me. Oh my God, I never thought of it like that, right? It seems so simple when you're watching as just a fan, right? You don't, you don't really understand the expertise, the level you're at when you're just watching as a fan. Yeah. But then when you start to do it, right? Your appreciation goes through the roof. So even like when I was watching, I'm just like, this is what I'm trying to do. And he's so good at it. And it's just, it, he's making... What's hard for me look easy, right? Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. that makes me think, okay, I can get to that level if I have to put the work in. I have, to, I have to do it. I have to get the reps in. So, so what happened that you decided that I'm going to do stand up? You I mean, you were doing so you're doing so incredible, yeah. And then you go, oh, I'm not. I'm working so hard. This is not enough. Let me add one <laughs> more big ass challenge and start touring and going out there and writing material and performing. Um, what happened? So I've always wanted to do stand up. I was I, I've loved stand up for as long as since I was like nineteen. I love stand up. Mm. I never like thought I would be able to actually do it, but I always loved it. I've watched it. I've seen everyone's special. I still do to this day. And um, when you're doing sketches, like I think just as of recently, like maybe last year, I got to the point where I don't get stressed out over sketches anymore. It's so easy for me now because I've done it so long. I still put effort in it. It still requires creativity, whatever, right? But I've put my hours in to master that craft. Mm. Whereas, like, you know, two years ago, if I wanted to start doing stand-up comedy, my brain was like, okay, this is a sketch joke, but this is a stand-up joke. And now I'm getting stressed. There's too much, right? Whereas now I feel like I can do sketches in my sleep. I can just do them. It's a very uh, basic formula that I have, and I just pump them out. And now I have the brain power to attack stand-up where I'm not going to be stressed about, oh, I still have sketches to do and not do stand-up. Now it's like sketches, I'm going to just do them. They're easy for me now because I've put so many hours and years and years of hours where it's easy for me. So now my brain has a capacity to do stand-up. So it was always a thing I wanted to do. It was just about timing and when the time was right. So I've been on stage maybe like maybe 25 times now. That's starting this year when I started doing stand-up. I tried stand-up twice before, before I had any followers. Wow. And I bombed heavy, <laughs> like badly. Wow. Um, and that, and not that I was like, oh, I'm never going to do it again, but it was, it was almost like, ah, maybe I, maybe this isn't my thing or maybe, uh, maybe I, I'm just not ready to do it right now. Um, where did you do your first set? I did it in New York. I forget where the, it wasn't like anywhere big. It was uh, okay. some like basement. And um, I remember I was doing like seven minutes and I went up there and I had all these jokes written and uh, I was doing them and it was just silence. Damn. Zero laughs. So uncomfortable, right? The longest and you know, seven like, minutes yeah, ever. Yeah. And you know, I you have like, you. you have like these jokes in there, right? And like the jokes have layers to them and it's a story that you're telling, right? And I remember I was telling these stories and I was like, shit, no one's laughing in the beginning of this story. They're not laughing at these punchlines. I have to bail out of the story. Like, if they're not laughing at this part, they're not going to laugh at the end, right? So I'm bailing out of jokes, right? And I remember like four minutes in, I'm like, okay, I've bailed out of all my jokes. <laughs> right? None of this is working. I have to do crowd work. I oh, have wow. to do something, right? So there's a guy in the front row and I'm like, 
hey, what's up, man? Like, where are you from? Right? <laughs> and I have no clue what I'm going to say, regardless of what he says. I don't even know why I asked him that. Uh, and I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Where are you from? And mind you, I'm asking him a question after four minutes of silence. <laughs> no, like, nobody even, no, everyone's uncomfortable in there. He's like, this and, guy's yeah, going to talk to me yeah, now. Yeah. And I'm like, where are you from? And he's like, I'm from here. And I'm like, oh, you're from this basement. The whole place laughs. It's the stupidest <laughs> joke ever, right? Right? Uh, Everyone starts laughing, right? And I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, I got the crowd now. So I go back to the material. Silence. Oh, my God. That was God. the only laugh that I got. The whole seven minutes, <laughs> right? So like five, six minutes, uh, five, six, seven minutes, nothing. Just at four minute mark, I had that one laugh. So I was like, all right, well, none of that stuff worked. So I do another show like two nights later. And I try to recreate the same moment, right? Where are you from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's this guy. I'm like, hey, where are you from? And he's like, Minnesota. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> I don't have no comeback. Oh, yeah, all right. Like, Good luck to you, sir. Yeah, I was like, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And I went back to the material. I had nothing to say to him. Oh, and at that God. moment, I was like, ah, oh, I just don't think I'm, I, this is so hard. I don't think, I don't, I don't think I'm ready for it right now. I don't think I'm ready for it. But one day I swear I'll come back to this. And this was the year I came back to it. Hey, and I'm life doing works it. in mysterious ways, buddy. Yeah, and I'm and here and I'm, you are yeah. crushing it. And now I'm going hard on stand up. And I really like, this is what excites me when I wake up. Coming up with jokes, writing jokes, uh, saying jokes. I, I'm so used to like seeing laugh emojis and not hear laughs in real life. It's the greatest thing ever. Oh, it's so fun. Like that's you know? a great way to. Put so it. Um, it's the emojis been, turned been, real laughter. Yeah, and it's it's been amazing, man. God, can I take my jacket off? I'm freaking sweating in here, buddy. Take it. Off. Listen, that was very nice of you to wear a jacket. I know you wore it so I don't look so skinny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now you're like, fuck it. Let me just show. Yeah, my I've been uh, I've been working damn. out. So. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, buddy, uh, let's talk about where you headed with your stand-up material. Um, I'm curious what you see today. Um, you're more of a long format stand-up comedy material. Is it going to be more um, talking about your family, your upbringing, or is it going to be more observational, more um, what's trending sort of scenario? Um, do you have an idea? Yeah, this is something that I've like gone back and forth trying to figure out. And I think where I landed with it is I have a very unique perspective, right? My situation, who I am, how I look, where I'm from, what I do for a career um, outside of stand up. It's all very unique, right? So like the lens that I have on the world is just very different than the next guy. Mm. Um, so really embracing that. I, I I don't want to get into the world of, hey, this comic is doing this and I should do that and I should do this. I want to just do what I think is No, 100%. Right? And That's what the I most see. Um, yeah. And some of that is family. Some of that is like, you know, I have TikTok jokes. I have, um, you know, what it's like being a famous comedian on social media as a joke. I have jokes about how I look, what my name is, what I look like my name should be, um, being brown. So really a mix of all those things. Um, but it is a very uh, tricky thing to navigate. I've been trying to figure out what do I, what does an hour look like for me? Because you see me do like five minutes, right? And it's cool, but and it's growing what, fast. But what you is you called what, me from Florida and you said, Max, I just I added another two minutes. <laughs> yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah. yeah you know, so, people don't realize how hard it is to create genuinely funny material. Mm, yeah. And and every minute, every you know, two, three minutes of material that really is working and is making a full room of people just die laughing. That's special. And, and yeah, I mean, uh, that's even why. like the, even the, um, another thing I've been like learning is sometimes when a joke's too good or it's too smart, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. the more simple joke works. Mm -hmm. Like I'll write something that has a pun in it that has like such a smart, clever way to tie in the beginning to the end and relate something and correlate it with something else. And it's so smart. But when you say it, it feels too scripted and, and the audience can feel the realness. hundred percent. Right. You know, you told me something the night I went up on your show and it was, you know, and it's not as related to this, but it was just something that stuck with me. It was, you know, when you go up on stage, you need to love the audience and trust yourself. Right. And it's so important because 
the audience is watching every one of your moves. And if you tell a story that feels too scripted or a joke that's too good, it feels like you wrote it. And and that's not going to get a laugh. Yeah. It will specifically not get a laugh. I know. I tried. So, like, the more natural something is, the more you live in the moment, the more you kind of stumble upon the story rather than, hey, here's my joke. And this is the joke. You laugh at it. They're not going to laugh. But if I'm just talking and then I so happen to hit a punchline. I'm still talking and I still happen to hit another punchline. That's when the magic of like, okay, now I can go back to the to my notes and write jokes that work. Mm. Because now mm. I'm starting to figure that all out right now. Cause because before I was like, this is such a funny joke. This is like it's every checks every box. Yeah. But it's not working. But it's being present. It's trusting yourself. It's not trying so hard, but trying hard. It's uh trusting the audience, loving everybody that's there. Yeah. They're there to yeah. root for you. They want to laugh at you. Um, you know, everything is set up for you to succeed, right? And um Wow. A lot I, I, of this I'm, stuff. I'm I'm happy to hear that that resonated with you because um I forgot we even had that conversation. <laughs> yeah, that that but, was a big moment for me. You don't even remember. Yeah. I did. yeah. <laughs> but trusting yourself is is for every 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 sort of art, you know uh, art or any person that could use that in their life life and 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 they need to trust themselves in in whatever they're doing right. But for us, loving the audience is is a very key element that I think a lot of comedians or young comics uh, don't have in mind before they go on stage. Before I hit the stage, I really. I'm so grateful for these people that are, they're my lovers. I mean, I go out there to have the most passionate connection with this audience. I love them. And reminding yourself that I'm going out there and I love these people instantaneously put the energy into a very positive place. And, 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 you know, if, if any human, uh, is, is, you know, keeping that in mind, they have no fear. Fear turns into something completely different. But if you don't go out there and love your audience, um, fear could become uh, very aggressive. And, and instantaneously, people feel energy. They feel distance from you. And one thing, since we're talking about this, I love about you is you're very likable without saying anything. You just, you just get up there and the very first time you performed, you have this uh, physical uh, things that you do that is very unique to you that we see it in the sketches. It's just the way you move and the way that you make these little faces yeah. and stuff. And it's so you and it's so likable. And I think that's a, that's a, a huge thing for any entertainer. If you're likable, you have a star quality. And, and that's just, you know, you got to know it and you got to just go out there and shine and let them see it and share it. You know, people uh, put so much effort to be in the theater. They spend money, they, they get in the cars, they, they dress up, they, you know, bring their loved ones. It's a, it's a lot to get into that theater. And, wow. and, you know, they come with this, all this love. And if, and if you just give it back to them, it's magic. Yeah. It's amazing. So true, man. It's even just being thankful, being grateful, like just makes everything better, man. Yeah. And, yeah. and as you should be, right? Like you're getting to go and perform in front of people that paid to come watch you, right? They came here, they left their house. They, yeah. who knows, they probably fought on the way here. It's a whole thing to get just to be in that seat, right? So in its own way, that's already an accomplishment before you even say a word. Yeah. You got people yeah. to come out and they are here to laugh and they're here to have a good time. So yeah, I think you're so right. Like the audience really can I don't think I don't think people give the audience as much credit as they should because they can feel everything. Right? Even if you're not saying anything, they're they're analyzing every what kind of shoes you're wearing, what kind of pants you're wearing, your facial expressions. Do you actually believe what you're saying or not? do you not believe what yeah, you're saying? Yeah. They, they're, 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 their senses are so high. So it's, it's so important when you say something, you know, even something, you know, that I've been like trying to manage is I've been doing the same jokes, working on the, on the jokes that I currently have. And it's so important to have that magic of when you tell that joke, like you're saying it for the first time. Cause like, I know the joke, I've said it so many times. Right. But, when you say something over and over and over, it gets boring to you, yeah, right? Yeah. But you got to think, and, and Dane was the one that was was giving me this advice. He's like, you know, you got to realize 
that person sitting in the seats is their first time yeah, hearing this. They've never heard and it. And you have to put the same energy and the same fun in it that you did the first time you said the joke. Yeah. Or else it won't work. Even if you say it with the same delivery, the same cadence, if you don't love the joke, if you don't love saying it, and if you're not saying it like it's the first time, it won't work. And that's the art. That's the art of, of a great storyteller. You say it like you've never said it mm. before and you, you're into it just like never before. Buddy, what a great chat, really. Yeah. Let's, I, I don't want to stop. Let's keep I'm, going. I swear. Are you ending this? Okay, we don't need to. I can yeah, ask well, you. Yeah, well, because you're... Yeah, I was just getting, I took my jacket off. I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> and I know these guys, they're, they, I talked to them earlier. They said they have nothing going on today. Oh, yeah. They're down at the JP. He has yeah. got nothing, no yeah. family, no one's waiting for him. Yeah. <laughs> guys, let's, we're just getting started. Uh, we can take an intermission and come back. You guys want to do that? You guys want to take a break and come back? This is the nicest guest I've ever had. Yeah. Or this even if so you want to head out, I don't. That, I'm cool to stay. <laughs> I have tons of stuff you to just, say. You just wait till we all go take a break yeah. and come back with more questions. Or no, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I don't even need you here anymore. I can do this. I can. I can take over if you want. Oh, I love it, dude. Uh, have you ever considered uh, hair laser removal? Oh, wow! What, what a transition. Uh, I actually have. <laughs> you want more questions? Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually have. How good is that stuff for you, though? Well, I mean, you're Middle Eastern. If you don't consider it, I mean, no, shit, I think, you're in big I think, trouble. I don't think it works on us. I think the second we <laughs> no, do it, it's going to come right it back. It works fantastic for us because really? we have dark hair. The laser can, uh, can you know, detect it much easier, and it doesn't come back. What if you did it with your hair cut? I just, I don't know. I just think it's Because then think necessity. about it. I never have to get a haircut again. My beard's <laughs> always lined up. Everything. <laughs> It's I would perfect. do it for that. Yeah, I mean, think about it, I mean, never have to. I spend an if, hour. What a week if you get a big role to play a, a crazy guy that needs to have hair coming out of no, his they, these ears? The effects they have. And, and I have eyes. hair and makeup come in. They add the hair in. Okay, all right. That's a good yeah, point. man. We're That's in twenty twenty three. I wasn't really thinking about your face. I was thinking yeah. about your asshole. I was just. <laughs> well, how do you know my asshole's hairy? <laughs> because you're a ha <laughs> You have the hairiest asshole yeah, of right. all time. It's like and wildfire that... down there. The hair is growing in different directions. <laughs> See, it's not See? even. No, it, no, he's it, explaining. Yeah, it's it, and even inside, like the, the no man's land area, <laughs> stuff gets stuck in there. I don't even. There's paper clips in there. There's wrappers and <laughs> it. It the hair is wildfire. It's growing all over. Well, we have a gift after this podcast. I don't even think... It's a laser hair removal from our sponsor. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> our sponsor is an Armenian clinic in Glendale. Oh, really? Yes, they specialize wow. in very heavy-duty, extra special, you know, hair laser removal machines. Wow. Uh, <laughs> is it... Oh, is the is, and I'm, it's not, I'm asking for a friend. Is the laser safe on a butthole? Absolutely. It's just designed for the butthole. It is a butthole yes, laser. It's just a butthole oh. laser removal. Oh. That's the name oh, of the clinic. The, oh, it's called but, Butthole they can't Laser do chest Hair hair. Removal. They don't no, have this. No, they, they, don't have they, they specialize in buttholes. It's just a butthole laser. Got it. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I still have like a hairy ass and hairy back. So I don't, I don't want just a clean butthole. And... No. And specifically, if you're a mixed Middle Eastern, Egyptian, and Afghanist, Afghani, then. Double the price. Double the price. Yes, you have to pay twice. Well, good thing I know you, right? They're a sponsor, so I'll get it for free. <laughs> I love you, dude. Uh, since I said that, I want to actually, maybe we end on uh, something very meaningful, okay. you know, because it's a crazy time in the world and, and uh, I'm Iranian and you mentioning that, you you know, you have a, uh, you know, a background from Afghanistan. What? the people of Afghanistan, the people of Iran are going through because of their government, because, you know, uh, the limitation that the society has put on them. It's so sad. And, it, and, and, and it's important we acknowledge this as people that are um, on the other side of the world. We're lucky to be living in a country that we could do what we want to do. And uh, I want to tell you something. As an Iranian, my heart goes to the women of Afghanistan first. I mean, women of Afghanistan have it even harder. And I truly wish that the universe comes to the rescue. Something magical happened because it's so hard to see what's happening there. And it's so hard not to say anything about it. And the reason I'm bringing this up to you is because I want to know if you do anything special to give back to Afghanistan, to, to the Middle East, to uh, any, any, any scenarios that, or charities or anything that you, that you, that you're passionate about? Yeah. I mean, on a smaller scale, I've like posted a couple of links for charity to kind of, you know, they recently just had an earthquake over there, which was mm -hmm. horrible. A lot mm -hmm. of people passed away, um, and didn't survive. 
Um, so I posted a couple of links for that um, on my stories, but it's it's really unfortunate, man. It's so tough, and and it it, it gets even tougher when it's like. You can't do anything about it. You try. You can put efforts towards it, but it's almost like it's tough. It's tough to figure out what is the answer. How can we find a solution for it, right? That's the hardest part. Um, but in terms of just, like, philanthropic work in general, like, I think a big thing that I believe in is education. Um, and I truly believe that education is how we end poverty, you know? And I've done two schools now in Indonesia um, where I'll have my audience raise the money. And the goal of the school is to help these kids learn English, which would then allow them to go to the mainland, right. uh, get a job because they speak English, That's make beautiful. money, and then now take that money and seek higher education, right? No, I love um, that. I love and that. the goal for me is to build a 1,000 schools across the world, and when we get a 1,000, we'll keep going and get more. But I truly think, you know, education is the cure to poverty, right? Because even if, you know, we're going to give clothes, we're going to give food, but it's all temporary, right? It's, I like to say those things are a Band-Aid, right? Like the clothes, the shoes you give somebody, they're going to grow out of them. The shoes are going to get old, right? But what can we do that teaches them something, that allows them? And even if, you know, we do it in a community where it's 500 people in, maybe every single kid in that school might not go on and get a job, but maybe five do. Or maybe 10 do. And they can come back to their village and they can spread that wealth. Every help helps. Right? Yeah, um, absolutely. So education has been a big thing I focus on. Um, my platform in general, always trying to use it for good. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I put out comedy. That's what I do. I make people laugh and that, you know, helps people in, in its own right, right? But at the same time, too, it is something that I care about. Um, being able to help people and use the platform. Um, and... It's tough, you know. I think when you open up yourself to, so to say, maybe political subjects, now you're putting a target on your back. You have all this hate coming in. You no, I agree all, with you. All this, all this but, coming but in. But I saw you try to help, and I saw how passionate you are about your people. And uh, I have a lot of Afghan friends. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I have a friend of mine that she builds schools in Afghanistan. Wow. And um, I want to get involved in that. Absolutely. I'm because even with that, like, I think, I think even with the entry point in a lot of schools, like even with the Indonesian school it was so easy to get in and work with a charity on the ground um and in afghanistan it's a little bit more tricky to get in and know that hey this money is going to go to the school the right place. Gonna build Correct. a school Correct. um you know can i go there see it see it get made right um so it is it is a very tricky thing to vet Right. And make sure you're working with the right people. Yeah. Because then I don't want to raise not, money for you something. You can definitely that not, not go, go there, Adam. You cannot go there. Yeah. I don't think you'll come back. Which is which is the tricky thing, right? Because like, school you. I don't want to raise money for something that I don't know where that money is going. Yeah. I want to yeah. guarantee that yeah. that money is going to that school and it's being built. And it's kind of tough when you can't physically go and Yeah, yeah. But there's there's people that are doing magnificent jobs out yeah. there. And, and I'll connect you to this particular lady that I know. She's such a wonderful girl. She, uh, her and her husband, Build uh, two schools wow. uh, in Afghanistan, and then the the Taliban's destroyed the, the schools and they rebuild them again. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, twice they destroyed the schools that they made, and then they rebuild them again. So uh, these people are so committed wow. to do things for Afghanistan for their people. I mean, it's just that's the least. I think we're, you know, we're on this side, and I personally. I'm, I'm always, everybody knows I'm open to help in any shape or form I can because it gives me some sort of um, feeling that I, I'm, I'm doing, you know, something uh, with the opportunity that life has given me. And yeah. uh, I think it's a duty to put it out there. And buddy, I'm so proud of you. Uh, you're such an inspiration to all people and even more so to people that are from the Middle East, any background, to see, as you said earlier, you know, I'm going to this town, this white guy's picking me up in his pickup truck and I don't even know if I'm gonna make it. Uh, but, but to see not only um, you've made it, but you're very loved. And that says something great about America. You know, we, we are creating opportunities. This country has given us this, this great, uh, possibility to do what we want and then on top of that be loved and and you know be able to inspire and it's just it's beautiful yeah. so and, and by the way I, I do want to close but I just say this I saw a video of you that now you're sharing 
all your your skills and knowledge oh, yeah. uh, on how you build this this magnificent brand, Adam W. Make sure he has incredible workshops. So if if any of you guys are into this world and you want to be a big creator, you have such an honest, beautiful, giving person, and you've you've helped me so much by giving me a lot of insights. Uh, and 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 I think you're brilliant, and Thank obviously you. the world knows you're brilliant because you, you know you're delivering. So make sure you catch his workshop. Yeah, it's called Creator Circle. So and it's really cool. I mean, it'll teach you from A to Z how to become a creator yes. first day. Yes. Or if you're already a creator, how to enhance yes. your content, how to enhance your engagement, your viewership, following. Um, and it's kind of this blueprint that I've learned over years and years of doing this uh, that I just put in a course form because. Why not? You know, I think when I started, it was so hard to figure out how the hell to do this. I'm Googling stuff, right? And like, I, I don't know how to do anything. And there, even to this day, you would think like years later, there'd be, be a course or some sort of blueprint or how do you, what if you lived in the middle of nowhere and you wanted to do this, right? And you didn't, you weren't in LA and you couldn't ask somebody who was famous or a big uh, social media star, how do you do it, right? And that's exactly what this course does. It teaches you exactly how to do it. But it's also not just for somebody who just wants to start. It's also for someone who might be already doing it and they've kind of gone stagnant and they're trying to figure out how to get to the next level. So Beautiful. it's kind of just, you know, everything that I've learned and continue to learn all in one course. What's it called again? Creator Circle. Creator Circle. Yeah. I actually have a workshop too. It's called Jerk Circle. <laughs> I oh, tell you exactly jerk. how to yeah. do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I think I'm subscribed to that. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to say in closing to your fans or just not? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, make sure you watch this. Watch this podcast. It's great. It's the best thing he could have said. If you're not watching this, make sure you watch this is what I want to say. If, maybe if you're watching this, go tell someone who's not watching it to watch this. Make sure That's you're right. watching this. Make sure you're watching this. Yes. Make sure you text everybody and tell them to also watch it. Yeah. Everyone who's not watching this, watch this. Exactly. Is what I'm saying. And if you watch it once, you can watch it twice. Well, that's the other thing I was going to say. If you watch it, if you're watching right now, watch it again. After you watch it, watch it again. <laughs> that, and watch it with someone new this time. Yeah. And then switch out that person and then someone new again. And keep watching it with the new person each time you watch it. And then we're going to hit billions of views. Yeah, that's how I did it. Huh? My God. Thank you for making us being seen by billions. Yeah. Billion with a B. Wow. Billions. I, I never knew this is how you make it go viral. Yeah. This is how you do it. If huh? you ever watch the end of my videos, I do this. Oh my God. This is what I say at the end. Watch it. 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 Yeah, watch it. Uh, watch it. Ladies and gentlemen, this was an incredible fun episode. I hope you enjoyed it as a fraction of how much I enjoyed it. Cheers. Adam, love you, buddy. Love you, man. Thank you. Buddy, thank you for coming on.